This is something that all students should see at some point in their science education. Not in a video, but for real. It's a simple demonstration to show that white light is made up of different colours, a range of different wavelengths. And it's fairly straightforward to set up. You need a source of bright white light. I'm using this projector, but you can use a standard ray box, a glass prism and a white screen to project the spectrum onto. However, there is a second part of this demonstration that's important to do. And for that, you need a second prism. If I place this second prism in the path of the spectrum and move the screen around, you can see that the second prism has recombined the colours back into white light. And this step is important to do so that students don't go away with any misconceptions about the first prism somehow adding colour to the light. Now once you've shown your students this, you can just tell them that on either side of the visible spectrum there are other types of light which we can't see which form what we call the electromagnetic spectrum. However, that's far more convincing if you can show it to them and for that I'm going to need the help of a technician. Hi Andreas, oh, what have you got here? I'm using a prism, just like you've shown, to produce a very bright spectrum. But this time I'm using these temperature sensors to tell us more about the electromagnetic spectrum. Sensor number three is right in the bright light and just as you would expect to leave something in the bright sunlight, we would expect this to warm up. So to compare this with the room temperature, I put a second temperature sensor, number two, right next to the spectrum. But I have also put the sensor number one in the direction in which my prism is spreading out all the different wavelengths of the electromagnetic radiation. Temperature sensor number three is warming up, as we do expect, but temperature sensor number one, which is outside the visible spectrum, is also warming up. And it is warming up even more than temperature sensor number three. Well, clearly it must receive energy from our bright light source, but it does so with an invisible form of radiation. And because it is beyond the red light, we call it the infrared radiation. Right, great. So th this is a bit like what William Herschel did back in 1799, is that right? That's right. William Herschel wanted to look at the sun through a telescope. And as you know, this is very dangerous and it would heat up your eyes. So he wanted to use filters to remove some of the light and remove the heat. He placed thermometers in different parts of the visible spectrum and he placed, like we have done, another thermometer next to it to compare it to the room temperature. But he placed it right next to the red light and th this way he discovered infrared radiation. Um, so this is a lovely example of replicating a, a bit of history of science in the classroom. Have you got any tips for technicians who might want to set this up? It looks quite complicated, but all we are doing is we want to produce a very bright light, which I use a low voltage projector lamp. It has a 100 watt, uh, and I use these lenses to project an image of this bright filament, which I then, with my prism, uh, spread into the different colors. We produce an intense light and heat uh, right on our temperature sensors. So you could do this with, with sunlight, couldn't you? Yes, you can do it with sunlight and it would actually make the experiment easier. Um, I would just place this prism like this above a screen and place mercury or alcohol thermometers on the table. It is actually much easier because I don't need these lenses but of course the temperature sensors are more sensitive and it's easier to display the result to the whole class. If I do the um, experiment with sunlight, like William Herschel did, you must, would measure a small temperature rise that way. But the British weather doesn't always cooperate, unfortunately. And not at the time when you want to hold your classes. So. This is a great demonstration to convince your students of the existence of invisible radiation. It also provides a lovely opportunity to talk to them a little about the history of science and how science works.